Welcome back, everybody, to the OPT Network. May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and we are honored to be joined by a great friend of ours and a great friend of the show, Dr. Robin Smith. She's a licensed psychologist, ordained minister, speaker, and author. She's best known as the therapist in residence for The Oprah Winfrey Show. You'll remember her on Oprah many, many times. Her best-selling book, Lies at the Altar, we believe it's a rebirth. Well, Dr. Robin joins us to talk about mental health at this very perilous time. Dr. Robin, good morning and welcome back. Hello there. It's so good to be with you. It's been a long time. Um, I feel like this reunion is sweet in the midst of such turbulent uh, times that we're in. Right back at you. I feel the exact same way. And there is something so calming and so good about having you speak into our lives and into our mental psyche. Let's talk about how people can avert or do we need to avert the fear that we're feeling, especially as as states are reopening? You know, I think it's interesting. We waste energy when we try and run from what shows up in our hearts and our minds. So I think this isn't about how do I play dodgeball with my feelings and my fears. It's how do I gently make room for them? How do I make soft space uh, to worry? but put some boundaries around how long I get to worry and do I do it alone? I tell people that it's so important. I mean, we're in a pandemic, something that none of us could have imagined, none of us have ever faced. And there's so much vulnerability, but part of what helps us navigate this is to find a safe other and tell the truth. So if you can't sleep at night because you're worried, if you wake up in the morning and your stomach is grumbling, almost like you're going to have diarrhea from anxiety, instead of hiding it and pretending to be fine, find someone. Sometimes that's a family member. Sometimes it's absolutely not a family member. It's a good friend. It's a neighbor. It's someone, maybe it's calling your show and saying today is a it's a hard day for me. It's a scary mm -hmm. day for me. But it's allowing ourselves to be in relationship when we are being asked in many ways to stay distant and, you know, to have social distancing. While we may need to be six feet apart if we're around people, we certainly need to make sure our hearts are connected during this time. So let me let me go to this point. You say call somebody and really express your truth. Now, I don't know if men deal with this, but I know that most women that I know deal with the shame of the truth mm -hmm. and not wanting to be judged by their truth, but really, really needing to say to another human being, this is what it is and not have yeah. them judge, but just have them listen. How do you help people to get there? You know, it's interesting, and I, I love your question. I want to remind everyone who's watching and listening that when I said reach out to someone, I very specifically said someone who is safe. Mm. So let me say it again. I didn't say just call someone. Right. I didn't say just reach out. I said reach out to someone who is safe, who will hold your heart gently and kindly without their own agenda for you, but allowing you to show up with your real feelings. So to go back to what you're asking, which is how do both men and women, how do we humble ourselves um, to let someone know how we're doing? I mean, part of that has a lot to do with whether or not we are ashamed of having our feelings. See, when I'm ashamed of my feelings, then I'm worried that you're gonna be ashamed of my feelings. But what I've learned and what I've taught is that when we realize that God gave us all of our feelings, 
all, A-L-L. Right. So not just feelings of being victorious and feelings of being in control, but feelings of being scared, feelings of being out of control, feelings of not knowing what the answer is, but needing someone to sit with us. And so part of this journey that we're on right now is to find a safe other, but it's being able to trust ourselves enough Mm. to know that, you know, I'm going to reach out to my, my sister and I'm going to actually, instead of just tell her how I feel, I'm going to tell her what I need from her, Mm. which is not an answer and not a fix. I just need a safe person to hear me. Oh, wow. And I was going to say to you, Dr. Robin, teach us how to be the safe other. You know, Mm -hmm. I was I was talking to a couple people that are really going through in this pandemic. One of my friends said that her mom and her her parents have been married for 40 plus years and they've never spent this much time together. And this was a time for her mom to express her truth to her to her husband mm-hmm. and really a time of forgiveness and all resentments and hurts that had just been there. See, we're we're so busy being about the business of being busy that sometimes you don't have time to think about all of those things that hurt you because you put them you put them somewhere, you pack them away. Well, you don't want to think. See, it's not really that we don't have time. We don't want to have time. We've been afraid to have time to know ourselves Mm. intimately and deeply and quietly. And so this pandemic, while it is um, scary about a virus that is taking lives and particularly in the African-American community, taking even um, more lives for reasons that we many of us understand, um, some of us don't understand, but also what this is doing. And I'd like for us to uh, really, in this moment, allow our minds to open up differently and realize that there is a gift in this shutdown. And I know that states are opening up and cities and towns are beginning to open up, but there was a purpose, not only Uh, to protect us from this, um, from COVID-19. But there was a purpose in this stillness that we might meet either anew or meet for the very first time. Mm -hmm. The self that we've been running from. Ooh, the self that we've been running from. Self that we have been running from. So we, we use our time to fix and, you know, do all these things for other people. I have an elderly mother Uh, I take care of her, uh, but do I use her needs as a distraction to not face myself? Do we use our children's needs? Do we use the virus even as a distraction to not face ourselves? You know, I have this quote that I often share that we can't fix what we can't face and we can't face what we can't feel. And so I'm inviting us in this moment, if we're trying to fix something, we have to realize that we've got to face it. But to face it, I have to be able to just with little baby steps, begin to feel things that maybe I've been running Mm. from all of my life. If you're just joining the conversation this morning, our guest is Dr. Robin Smith. She's a licensed psychologist, ordained minister, speaker, and best-selling author. And I think that that's so impactful because most of us can't face a thing. You can't fix it if you, if you can't face it or if you don't think that it's a problem. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, the other thing about the coronavirus and what it has ushered in besides illness and fear and terror. Um, It's also given us a moment to reflect on what matters and what doesn't, who matters and who 
doesn't really matter. Where have we poured our energy out? And I say this again, I know men do this. They waste time and energy distracting themselves in sometimes too much sports or into drinking too much or eating too much. Women can do the same. Women, if they're able, maybe, or shopping too much, wasting time uh, running from themselves. But one of the things is we are looking at our own wellness, our own mental wellness and spiritual wellness is can we begin to tell the truth about things we have been fearful of? I often say to people that therapy at its best is when I actually am learning to overhear the conversation that I've been having with myself, but too afraid to listen. Wow. So I'm just asking in this moment, if we could begin to overhear the inner conversations that we've been having with ourselves, but too afraid to hear. And I will say this also that all transformation requires courage and all courage requires vulnerability. And so when we think about courage, sometimes we think, oh, courage and fearlessness means we have no fear. Of course, it doesn't mean that. That's not in this world that we have no fear. Of course, we have fear. That's, a, that's one of our feelings. That's part of being a whole human being. But the issue is, does that fear paralyze me? Does it make me plug my ears up? and close my eyes down so that I don't see or hear what it is I'm really feeling. And so I hope that as we look at mental wellness and mental health and spiritual wellness and health and physical wellness and health, we begin to say, what is my truth? What is my truth that I've been afraid to say? Like, I often will say in the black church, there is a statement, if you ask someone how they're doing, they might say I'm blessed and highly favored. Yes, Nothing ma'am. Wrong with that. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with that. When it is true. When it is true. But it's when, become a colloquialism. It's become absolutely. the thing to so say. I'm listening for someone to say, you know, Dr. Robin, I'm blessed, but my life is a mess right now. Right. I'm blessed because I'm here but my marriage is a mess or my parenting is a mess or my health is a mess. But isn't and there, but isn't there so do. much shame that we, we have, we have covered up this faking fine so much that sometimes we don't even know the truth. You, you don't even true. know your truth. That, that is true. And that's why I said, if we can begin to listen in over here, the deep conversation that's been happening inside that is often buried underneath all kinds of sayings and fake smiles and clothes and houses or poverty. I mean, there are lots of ways in which we bury our aches and our longings. But I will say this, that if we slow down just long enough, if we are quiet and still, just for a breath or two. And we ask ourself, self, how do you feel? Self, how's your heart doing today? Self, do you feel loved and cared for or abandoned and lonely? I will guarantee you that that self, if we are safe enough and will slow down enough, will begin to tell our story. Hmm. One of the things that, that you have, have really advocated is the idea that there is real power, real power in asking for help. And that yes. is something, especially in certain communities, that asking for help is not easy, especially when it comes to mental well-being. Well, you know, it's not easy unless we understand that all of us need help. And I think it's not easy asking for help because there's been so much fakery 
um, that people are around um, so many people and families, even as our families are imploding or exploding and melting down, we are still hearing um, this kind of fake, fake joy, mm. fake smiles, I mean, fake holidays. And so part of it becoming um, easier for us to ask for help is really reminding ourselves of what is true that those who don't ask for help are just those people who are hiding that they need what the person who has more courage will do. So when I hear people say, oh, I never would go to therapy, and there are lots of reasons for that, I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe you'd never go to therapy, but who is it that you will sit with and invite your truth. And I mean the truth that you don't want on the front page of the paper, the truth that you don't want uh, on the airwaves, right? but the truth that lives within you. And so this really is a moment where I am inviting um, all of us to begin to show up. I say show up like a grown up, but to wake up, to show up to grow up and to rise up. And that requires work. It requires doing the work. So if someone wants to have a great relationship, I always say to people, well, what are you putting in? If you want chicken soup, you can't put in beef and wonder why it's not chicken. So if we want abundance and we want love and we want joy, We've got to look at what am I putting in first into myself and then into relationships that matter. We cannot withdraw what we have not put in. You go to the ATM machine, you try to take a hundred dollars out, but you put five in, it comes back insufficient funds. Right. And so many of us are with trying to withdraw where there aren't enough funds, not enough funds in our own hearts, our own souls and in the relationships we're in. And then we are demanding ourselves to live a lie that we are happy when we are aching. Mm. And so that makes us sick. You know, the quote that we are only as sick as our secrets, today is about beginning to tell the truth. Powerful. With gentleness and compassion, but to tell the truth. Dr. Robin, thank you so much. Thank you for thank your you. compassion and your heart and your heart for people. Before you've got to go, tell people how they can connect with all the resources that you have available to get started. Thank you so much. It's been so good to be um, here. And if you are um, listening and watching, you can find me at drrobinsmith.com. That's drrobinsmith.com. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dr. Robin L. Smith. And I want to remind you of this. Um, if you need help, um, reach out. Reach out to, there are 800 numbers available. If you are feeling desperate, if you are feeling like no one cares, um, you deserve to be embraced. Your feelings deserve to be honored. And there are people who will listen. They will find resources for you in your own community. Um, but you are not alone. And I really want you to remember that. And just in closing, to remember, don't waste your time, don't waste your life, and don't waste this moment. Mm. And let's just leave people with this because there's been this adage that if you go to therapy or if you go to a psychiatrist or a psychologist that you are crazy, and that is just not true. Well, it's not true. I mean, I've gone myself. I'm not crazy. I'm stronger. I'm wiser. I can help people because I've done my own work. So often when we don't do our own work, our stuff spills over. It spills over onto our kids. It spills over in our relationships, our marriages, our work relationships. So the best thing you can do, A, because you owe yourself the best, is to do your own work. And then you can give more first to yourself and then to others. But therapy and support 
is not about being crazy. It's about being wise. It's about being strong. It's about taking yourself seriously so that you can live the life that is really yours to live. Dr. Robin, again, thank you so much. We cannot wait to see what the universe has next for you. Stay well, stay thank blessed you. until we meet again. Absolutely. Same to you. Thank you so much. Be well and be blessed. Indeed. Take hey, everybody, stay on point. We're back after this.